Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here with a special report on our sun. The magnetic field of the sun is weakening. And this is a trend that's starting to become apparent as we examine the past 50 years of data. Now, as many of you know, the sun has a regular solar cycle that lasts about 11 to 12 years, though the range is more like eight to 14 years. It goes from solar minimum, where it has a stable polarity and there are very few sunspots. So you have a strong magnetic field in the northern polar region and the southern polar region, just like a dipole magnet. And then this transitions and flips. And during that mid flip period called solar maximum, you have a chaotic magnetic field. You have a lot of sunspots. You have more energy output from the sun overall. We are right now in solar cycle 25 maximum. This period lasts about three years and the recent sunspots high for solar cycle 25 maximum was August of 2024. So we are still very much in solar cycle 25 maximum. But if we look at the longer time frame, the past 50 years of data, it appears that the solar magnetic field is weakening and we don't know if this trend is going to end anytime soon. Now, some of you are astute students of the sun and you may be thinking, hey, actually the magnetic field is strengthening right now because we are moving away from solar maximum into the next solar minimum. And here we see during solar minimum, the magnetic field polarity is quite strong. You have this clear dipole. Here we have an inward facing field. There we have an outward facing field. This is the solar minimum dipole Going back to the beginning of solar cycle 25, about December of 2019, here we see actually we're right at the end of 2020, getting into 2021, we see this polarity, this clear dipole starting to flip with a little bit of more chaotic magnetic field dynamics emerging from the sun. And jumping forward in this solar cycle, we see that in 2023, now all of a sudden that polarity is gone and we have a chaotic magnetic field that is in the process of flipping. It's not yet solar maximum. This is the ascending phase of solar cycle 25, but we see that the uh, outward facing magnetic field is starting to rotate down here. The inward facing field is starting to rotate to the Northern hemisphere as part of that solar cycle. And in reality, the magnetic field actually basically disappears in many ways. And you just get these localized magnetic fields created around these sunspots that form these closed loops. You see that there and the larger overall magnetic field of the sun disappears such that during solar maximum, the polar field strength goes to about zero gauss. Looking across a longer time frame though, more than just one solar cycle, but many solar cycles, we see that the magnetic field of the sun in fact is weakening. And this has perhaps some interesting implications as it relates to, for example, our heliosphere its ability to protect us from interstellar plasma and galactic cosmic rays. And also there's an interesting connection between the strength of the solar magnetic field and high magnitude earthquakes. And so here we have a composite data graphic that I created. We have our solar polar field strength across time up top. This is about 50 years of data going from January 1st, 1976, all the way till the end of 2025. So we don't have the data yet for the months of March through the rest of 2025. We also have sunspots down below. This is our NOAA sunspot number. And we see solar cycle 21 here, 22, 23, 24. And what we have for 25, this is the, the prediction line there. We'll see how that plays out across time. I've labeled in solar cycle 21 maximum and the maximum periods all the way up to 24 there. And so we see that these clear sunspot peaks are those periods where the magnetic field is mid flip. And in fact, that solar polar field strength goes to about zero because here we see our Y axis, negative two gauss, all the way up to positive two gauss. And so you see it oscillates between these high values and around when it's zero is that maximum period. So we see in general, solar cycle maximum lines up in the polar field strength of zero because it has to basically disappear for then it to reemerge during the next solar minimum. And you will also see down below our earthquakes magnitude eight or greater for this time frame, 1976 to 2025. 
and I layer these in, we see our scale there, so we actually can get the magnitude as well, the two big ones being the magnitude 9.1s that hit Sumatra and then Japan, 2004, 2011. Those are the biggest of this time frame. But let us look up top to start. This is our solar polar field strength across time, and you'll notice that we had a strong polar magnetic field here of about one gauss, and then it went through solar cycle 21 maximum. You'll notice that this maximum is fairly short in duration compared to example solar cycle 24, which is longer, and also solar cycle 23, which is also longer in duration. There's a little bit of data suggesting that the shorter a solar cycle, the more intense it is in terms of peak sunspot numbers. Then we had this maximum, it went through zero, the, the polar field strength disappeared, you know, went to zero, but then it went back down and actually got close to about negative 1.5 gauss, about maybe negative 1.35 gauss right there. Then we had the next solar cycle, again, it went through zero gauss, the polar fields disappeared, and it went back up to about one gauss. And so we have these values there of about one to 1.35, whether it's positive or negative. Those are the, the typical field strengths that we see going back to about the turn of the century into the 21st century. But then solar cycle 23 flipped things around because we see this solar cycle here, which was pretty similar to solar cycle 21, 22 in terms of sunspot numbers. But then all of a sudden, the magnetic field of the sun during that solar minimum period really did not strengthen. You see a significant difference here between these values there. This only going to maybe negative 0.6 gauss at its highest, uh, more probably close to negative uh, 0.5 gauss. And then we had solar cycle 24 being anomalously weak. Many people think this was the bomb of a Gleisberg cycle, an 88 year long variation in solar activity, explaining that dip in sunspot numbers. We see again, the field strength went back to zero or so, and then it re-emerged on the other side, but our polar field strength did not strengthen two values like we saw with these other solar cycles. Instead, it went again to about this 0.5 Gauss range, hovered there, you see it's kind of drawing out, and now we're going down here, we're moving through zero, we are starting to re-emerge with new polarity with solar cycle 25, though we are still well within this solar maximum period, which is very likely going to start entering into the descending phase around the beginning of 2027. Uh, we see our sunspot numbers there for solar cycle 25. But unless this all of a sudden starts to really drop quickly, and effectively that polar field strength strengthens quite rapidly, this looks like it's going to be even shallower than solar cycle 24 and 25 minimum, that zone in between right here, and then also this zone in between 23 and 24, this minimum period there. And so it looks like across this longer time frame, the magnetic field of the sun has been weakening how that interacts with the overall interstellar magnetic field and interstellar plasma is an interesting thought. We know that there's a whole bunch of highly vibrational matter out beyond the edge of the heliosphere. The solar maximum really strengthens the heliosphere because of all the coronal mass ejections, the increased X-ray flux from the sun. It's just more highly vibrational light being emitted from the sun. But if you have a weaker field strength, perhaps that also corresponds to a weaker heliosphere overall. And how that then relates to the entire energetics of the solar system is quite an unknown because we have to recognize that we only have limited data as it relates to this. We don't have thousands or millions of years of data as it relates to the sun and energetic dynamics between the sun and interstellar space and other stars, we have basically just the data from the space age and then more indirect measurements going off of, for example, radioisotope data. So there's that question, but really interesting here is our earthquake data because we see that we had some magnitude eight and greater earthquakes. For example, here, one at the very beginning of magnitude eight and then uh, another low magnitude eight earthquake right there before solar cycle 21 maximum, no magnitude or eight earthquakes during that maximum or descending phase. Then we got some to pop off during solar minimum. There does seem to be this inverse relationship between sunspot numbers and in general overall solar activity and earthquakes, especially the highest magnitude earthquakes. We see that again here, just one magnitude eight earthquake during the maximum period. 
then you get them popping off during the minimum. But that started to change with the magnetic field of the sun and the polar regions weakening. Then we get a whole bunch of giant earthquakes and these two 9.1s when this polar magnetic field strength is quite a bit less than it is during these periods. Again, this is one Gauss right there. That's nearly negative 1.5. Again, about negative 1.35 or so. And then that's about one Gauss. And this is just about half of that field strength. Again, just about half of these prior polar field strengths. So that's a very interesting connection, correlation. We know that the sun has an influence over the earth energetically. It's by far the main energetic influence on the earth. You turn the sun off and all of a sudden earth is a cold lifeless place. Everything else is downstream of that. The sun is what's driving the global electric circuit and the flow of energy around the planet. It's driving the climate and therefore, you know, climate drives weather. Uh, and so there's all these other modifying factors on that, but ultimately without the sun, Earth would be a cold, dark, lifeless place. So it's driving all the geophysics on our planet. And we see that earthquakes really pop off during these periods when the polar field strength is weakening. Again, a very limited data set. This is all we got, but it's interesting to consider. And if this continues weakening further, perhaps it doesn't even get down to negative 0.5 Gauss. Does that mean that we have a whole slate, a slew, a, a flurry of giant earthquakes ahead of us? That is a big unknown. But as of right now, this connection right here with this limited data set is very, very interesting and it's quite compelling. So that's one of the factors that's been playing out across our solar system over a longer time frame. And I'll keep you up to date with any new observations that I make as it relates to the energetics of our solar system, as it relates to the sun, as it relates to the geophysics and geology on our planet, the other planets, planetary resonances, and more. So if you like the sound of that, then please subscribe to the channel. Again, I've been your host, Stefan Burns, geophysicist, and smash that like button if you enjoyed this video. We have a lot of very interesting things happening with the sun right now. We've had some massive coronal holes rotating around the sun now. This is the eighth rotation of this gargantuan coronal hole. Looks like that's going to appear again for rotation number nine. That's going to be around mid May. We also have a very active sunspot about to rotate into view that could give us some really significant solar flares and coronal mass ejections. So I'll keep you up to date with these developing stories if you subscribe to the channel. Hope to see you around. Wishing all of you well and have a great one.